another restoration of all things message in the spirit and power of Eliyahu to prepare the way for Yahushua's second coming. Thank you guys for coming today. Um, we're about to get into some interesting things about the Order of the Ancients and the Order of Melchizedek and how it ties into scripture on a very, much deeper level than we were able to do so before. Um, Brother John on here has put together quite the slideshow full of chock full of information uh, so stick around for some for a nice full course meal and so Aki John I'm going to hand that over to you thank you brother Aki um, Lawid we're going to enter into prayer we're going to seek the throne of Yahuwah in this matter that it'll be his words that uh, his directions, his instructions that uh, be coming out of this for this wonderful, wonderful word that he has for us. Father, have compassion upon us, O Yahuwah, according to your loving kindness, according unto your multitudes of tender mercies, blot out our transgressions, hide your face from our sins, and blot out our iniquities. Create in us a clean heart, O Yahuwah, and renew a right ruach within us. Search us, O Yahuwah, and know our hearts. Try us and know our thoughts. See if there's any wicked ways in us and lead us in the way of everlasting love and covenant. Show us your ways, O Yahuwah. Teach us your paths. Lead us into your truths and teach us, O Father, for you are our Elohim of our salvation, and unto you we wait upon you all day long. And Father, thank you for bringing us together on such a time as this, for such a precious moment that we have today. Uh, Father, as we approach the tribulation period, Father, thank you for allowing us to be here and congregate. Brothers and sisters, this is the chapter one, Order of the Shamaim. These are the writings of Aliyahu, and we will go deep into the order of Melchizedek. Here we have a rock. Uh, the rock, we are we are told to build our house upon the rock, which is Messiah. And when we do build our house upon a rock, when the flood comes, it will not blow our house away. We know that the dragon will cast a flood against us out of his mouth. And if we build the house upon the rock, we will be protected. We will overcome. Will you be prepared, beloved? Let your house not be built upon sand, beloved. This is an animation of Melchizedek's temple. It was recently found. This is actually Zion. This little area is Zion. And inside this temple was a rock. And if you remember, Jacob, he took a stone. It was a rock and he used it for pillows. And then that rock that he found that he used, he, he used it and set up a pillar and he had poured oil and anointed it. And, and that city that he named was called Bethel, the house of Elohim. And in Spanish, it means loose, which is means which in English means light, the house of light. So these are all metaphors of the Messiah. We want to be in his we want to be in his light. We want to build our house upon the rock, which is him. We also know in Genesis 49, 24, that the mighty one of Jacob, he's called the shepherd, the stone of Yasharel. So let us continue. Melchizedek, my righteous sovereign, the king, also a coin Hagadol, high priest. So he's my he's our righteous king and our coin Hagadol, our high priest. The order of Melchizedek. It is our righteous king, high priest, and his divine prescribed order. This is the structure. The order is from the Hebrew word. The bra, and it means a careful arrangement or placement of words or commands with substance, with power, authority. The bra is from the root word, the var, 
which is the word, the davarim, the word. It's a place of order by Yahuwah's words, which is Messiah. These are Messiah's attributes and character. So it's very interesting that the word, the bra, the root word is the bar. That's very interesting because the word a bar, the word that was spoken, it's a command. It's action. This is an action word. We're going to talk about the service. The service is a kehila, an assembly of the yadad of the yadid, the assembly of the brethren. And it also entails a government. There's a physical government and a spiritual government and the hierarchy, the agencies, the offices, the gifts of the Ruach. The hierarchy involves Father all the way down to Messiah, us, the, the angels, the hierarchy of the Malachim. We will study that later when we go deeper into this book. As we continue, Torah is the constitution. The Torah is this prescribed instructions that are to be met on target. And in the new millennium, he will uh, rule the world with a rod of iron, with this constitution. With, it'll be a Torah-based world. In Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, it tells us, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government, the authority, the power, and dominion shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty, Alua, Everlasting Father, Prince of Shalom. Of the increase of his government and of Shalom, there will be no end. On the throne of Dawid, and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it, to support it with justice and with righteousness. For this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of Yahuwah of hosts will perform this. He will fulfill this. Now, we, we learned also that the uh, condition of the covenant uh, to enter in the promised land, to enter into his rest, uh, to enter into the seventh millennium is found in Genesis 18, 19, where it says we are to guard the way of Yahuwah to do justice and righteousness that Yahuwah may bring upon Abraham that which he has promised him. And as you can see, there is an Aleph and the Tav after Abraham and before the promise. Let us know this is a covenant marker and that the Messiah is present. Let us continue. Abba Yahuwah sent his son to restore righteous order. Right now, Yasharal is out of order. They are not doing as a unit. We are dispersed. We are, um, we are in division. We're, be, we're divided amongst ourselves. But Father now is bringing upon the restoration of all things through the power, uh, through the Ruach and power of Eliyahu which is restoring all things upon the earth right now. And this is what's bringing us together right now as, a, as an assembly to bring this message. We in Messiah are his seeds. And when we do the condition of the covenant to do righteousness and justice with Messiah and us, then, then we are fulfilling that covenant condition. And this is what he has put in our hearts, that we are to go and proclaim the good news the Great Commission work, and to bring them into fulfilling the covenant conditions so they can, so that the fullness of the Gentiles come in. So everyone having been born of Yahuwah does not commit sin because his seed, his serah, Yahuwah's seed abides in him and he is powerless to sin because he has been born of Elohim. And this is found in 1 John 3.8. And we're discovering we are, we are not, according to this verse, we are not born from above fully. We are not fully converted, as some of us say, that we are born from above. We have a, um, a measure of the Ruach that has led us here, but we have much work. We must divorce our flesh. We must seek more righteousness. We must decrease as he increases, and that is the Messiah in us. Those righteous seeds of the seed, which is Messiah, are doing. They are tamim. They are blameless in the way. 
and they walk in the Torah of Yahuwah. They seek him with a whole heart and they also do no iniquity. They walk in all his ways. According to Psalm 119, 1 through 3. Zadok, the word Zadok means righteousness or just from the word Zadok to be, and it's also an action verb. And it means to do, to cleanse, to make teshuvah, to turn. So Melchizedek has the, has the word Zadok in it, a righteous king. So if we continue here, it's the, those royal priests, seeds in Messiah, who divorce their carnal ways and do a hundredfold of their works out of love for Yahuwah are considered Zadoks, not that they're from the tribe of Levi, but according to just the definition of righteousness. Because I mentioned that on a video, and I just want to bring clarity to that. Torah, the Torah, the instructions of the Father, the divine instructions is the order of righteousness that keeps us in covenant relationship. This is what keeps us in covenant status with Yahuwah. And uh, we've been taught that we're not under the law, that we're under grace, but grace is Torah. If we are obedient to Yahuwah out of pure love, out of unmerited favor, that is grace because he is allowing us and he is breaking the veil for us to understand his Torah instructions that we may do it with Messiah in us. Everything that we will talk about today is going to be according to 1 Corinthians 15, 23 to 24, that each in his own order. Everything's done in decent and in order. Messiah, the first fruits, then those that are in Messiah at his coming, then the end. When he delivers up, when he gives up the reign to Elohim, the Father, when he has abolished or brought to nothing all rule or authority and all power, meaning Satan's kingdom will be destroyed by the rock made without hands. So we are to be Shomer. The word Shomer means to guard over. Like in a prison, when a, when a, a jailer is guarding his prisoner, if the, if the prisoner escapes, then that jailer loses his life. It's life for life. The same with us. If we do not guard over the word that's been entrusted to us, it is life for life because we're in a covenant of life and death. So we must be careful how we guard over his word that's been entrusted to us. And so we are following covenant law magnified by Messiah in the Ruach and not the flesh. So Messiah, Messiah, magnified he gave us the correct interpretation of the commandments it is written if a man lies with another woman he commits adultery but i say if a man looks upon a woman and in his heart he's already committed adultery so the torah the, the instructions have been magnified by messiah okay i want everyone to look at this picture and see, um, just look at it. Look at the picture. We see an altar. We see a fire coming down from Shamaim. We see these two pe persons here with water. And uh, we know that Eliyahu is having a, he's in a spiritual war right now. So keep this picture in your mind as we go through the scriptures. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am Elohim. What we're doing right now, we are defining the word ancient. Um, and so let us continue. And there is none else, for I am Alua, and there is none like me, declaring the end, the end time events from the beginning and from the ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my divine counsel, my purpose, my plan shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. We're going to cross-reference that with Daniel 7, Daniel 7, 13 and 14. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of Shamaim, there came like one, like the Son of Man, and he, the Messiah, came to the Ancient of Days, 
and was presented before him. And this is Abba Yahuwah. There was a given to him dominion, splendor, and a kingdom that all the people's nations and languages should serve him. And his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that shall not be destroyed. So this is the son of man given dominion. Messiah, he is the Shiloh of Genesis 49.10. And, and it tells us in Genesis 49.10 that unto him shall be the obedience of the people, which is the one new man. So it, it was prophesied already in Genesis that Messiah would save a nation, would save a people, or an, an obedient nation. And so let us continue. Uh, we are learning the former things of old, uh, that part of the divine counsel, that Yahuwah is doing his pleasure, that his word does not come back void. Now we're going to cross-reference this with Enoch 46, 1 and 2. There I beheld the Ancient of Days, whose head was like white wool, who resembled that of a man. His countenance was full of majesty, like that one of the Kodesh Malachim. Then I inquired one of the messengers who sent with me and who showed me every secret thing concerning this son of man, who he was, whence he was, the Malak answered and said to me, This is the Son of Man to whom righteousness belongs, with whom righteousness has dwelt, and who will reveal all the treasures of that which is concealed. For Yahuwah of spirits has chosen him, and his portion has surpassed all Yahuwah of Ruachs in everlasting uprighteousness. These verses here are full of nuggets here so he messiah is from the ancient of days he's the son of man and he will reveal all the mysteries of the kingdom which have been concealed as he's doing right now we're in the primitive stages of the kingdom mysteries being revealed to us and to others around the world and it also talks about a portion here this portion has to do with the melchizedek order with the ancient order of the priesthood because that is an everlasting priesthood with everlasting uprighteousness and this is why we say yashar ral because upright upright means yashar and so we say yashar ral because it is the nation in uprighteousness let us continue jeremiah 6:16 Thus says Yahuwah, stand in the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient paths. Where is the good way? And walk in it and find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. And today, uh, this is happening. Many are turning from their first love and uh, are rejecting Messiah. They're putting their light under the table. And um, it's sad to see. It's sad to see and sad to hear. We must continue to pray for those that are doing that. Our first love and the former things of old are the ancients past to dwell in. Torah is the order, the instruction manual that keeps us in covenant relationship. Again, I'm saying this so that we understand that it is the Torah instructions with Messiah and us that keeps us in that relationship status through his son, Yahushua, living in us in a clean temple body. Hebrews says that without being set apart as Kodesh, no one will see the Father. Um, the word is sanctified. Some use the word without holiness. So without holiness, you will not see Abba Yahuwah. So we're looking at this picture again because I want you to, to kind of get a picture of where we're going because this is the spirit and power of Elijah. This is similar to what John did uh, also in the spirit and power of Elijah as he prepared the way for Messiah. And also in the last days, that same spirit and power is coming back and is manifesting in his people 
And those that have that Ruach and power of Elijah, of Eliyahu, will be doing similar works like he did. Let us continue. And now we're going to look at this picture. We're going to continue with this message here. What do we see here? We see a yoke. We see agriculture. We see an older oxen. The one with the longer horns is the older oxen. This represents Messiah. We are to be yoked to him. We are the young Messiah. We're learning from him. And we are to plow the field with Messiah and us together, side by side. And we're planting seeds. And we're walking the straight way. We're not veering to the left or to the right. We're going straight forward with Messiah and us, wherever he takes us. Let us continue. Chapter 1, 1 of the writings of Eliyahu, the order of the ancients. The record, the testimony of Eliyahu, Elijah, the Tishbite, which he wrote for his disciple Elisha, whom he called from his field, Abel Mahola, unto the Kodesh order of Aluahim, the set-apart order of Yahuwah. We're going to break this down. We're going to speak about the record. We're going to speak about the field first. This field, Abel Mahala, is found in 1 Kings 19.16, when uh, Eliyasha, the son of Yashafat, was in this field, and uh, it was told to Elijah, Elijahu, Eliyahu, that he would be anointed prophet Okay, And in 1 Kings 19.19, 19, when Elisha was plowing the field with 12 yoke of oxen in front of him, it says here that he was with the 12 ox. Eliyahu passed by him and cast down his mantle, his talit, upon him. It is important that, that we understand uh, the yoke and the ox. It's very important because this is playing out in our time. Um, we, we know later that, that even upon Eliyahu's death, the double portion anointing of the rock and power of Eliyahu was on Elisha, and it lingered into his bones and enacted a resurrection from the dead. When he was dead, a man was thrown into the, the grave, and he, and he stood up, and he became alive again. Abel Mahola means dancing meadow. Uh, it means to serve with joy and gladness. So everything we are to do, we are to do it with joy and gladness. As we are yoked to Messiah, as we walk with him, planting seeds, plowing the field, going the straight way, we are to do everything and serving with joy and gladness. Because the Torah tells us that we don't. There will be repercussions for that. Uh, according to Deuteronomy 28, 47. Let us continue. In 2 Kings 13, 21, Elisha died and they buried him and a man was thrown onto the grave of Elisha. And if you can see, there's an olive on the top right here. This is important because this represents Messiah Ushua right here um, after the man was thrown. And as, and as soon as as the man touched the bones of Elijah, he, re he revived. He was restored back to life from the dead. Just like the prodigal son. Remember, his father said, my son is dead, but now he's alive. So were we. We were dead in the world, serving Satan. But now in Yahuwah, we're alive. He is restoring all things. He's showing us things that have never been shown. Most assuredly, I tell you the truth, he who believes in me, he who has emunah in me, the works that I do, he will also do. And he will do greater works than this because I am going to my father. This is John 14, verse 12 by our Messiah. We will do the greater works. Those that receive the power and the ruach of Eliyahu, the anointing will do the works that have been prophesied to be done in our days to come as we are entering the tribulation. Let us continue. Now, 
In 1 Kings 18, verse 31, it reads that Eliyahu repaired. And that word repaired is Rafa, which means mend, be made whole or heal. And we know that's one of Yahuwah's titles, Yahuwah Rafa, Yahuwah our healer. And so Eliyahu repaired the altar of Yahuwah that was broken down. And as you can see, there is another elephant in the top right before the altar. And Elijah took 12 stones. There was 12 yoke of oxen. Now there's 12 stones, 12 tribes, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Yaakov. And in Exodus, we know that Moshe, at the base of the mountain, he stood up 12 pillars, 12 stone columns. And to whom the word of Yahuwah came and saying, Yasharel shall be your name. And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of Yahuwah. So here we see that Eliyahu was called to repair the altar, to make it whole, to heal it. It was broken. And the 12 stones that he used is also representing of the fallen tabernacle of David, which fell and which now Messiah Yahushua is restoring now. He is restoring it fully into a spiritual house. Messiah is the cornerstone. He is the keystone. He is the headstone. And with him, we are the living stones. Built up a spiritual house to do spiritual sacrifices, living sacrifices for him. And all of this is supposed to be done in love. And that is the glue that holds everything together. That is the glue that holds the house together. Love. Love is what holds this house together. And these living stones that we are are perfectly fit and knitted together into this house. Just as you saw the, the pillars, the stones that, he, that Eliyahu used to build that altar. So right now, the father is restoring, he's establishing the, res and, the and he's restoring the exiles. The two sticks are becoming one in his hand. Let us continue. And in Matthew 11, verse 29, Messiah says, take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am humble, gentle, and a lonely in heart. And you will find rest. You will find security for your souls. Where Adam failed, the second Adam triumphed. And we know that in Mark 13, 14, he talks about an abomination of desolation. And it, and it concerns an altar. And that altar, my brothers, is your heart. Your heart is the altar. That is where the Ark of the Covenant is spiritually. That's where everything's at. If we are the temple, our bodies is the temple, then this is the tabernacle of the Father. Our living bodies, our bodies, they're not ours. They belong to Him. This is why we must remain kadosh. We must remain clean. We must divorce our flesh. And to come to the knowledge of the truth and apply it. The reason I'm saying this is because many believe that that third temple in Jerusalem is the abomination. But scripture tells us that the altar of abomination is our hearts. So it could be that the enemy is already in your hearts. Let not your hearts wax cold, beloved. Seek after Yahuwah in all his ways, in all his paths, and seek him daily that he teaches you. And not man. One important note to make is that we, we see that in uh, 1 Kings uh, chapter 19, it talks about that um, Elisha was with the 12 oxen that was yoked. And we know that in Revelation 7, 8, that 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. And Benjamin was the 12th tribe that was sealed. So there's a connection between Benjamin and the 12 oxen because we know that Brother Shaul, uh, some know him as Apostle Paul, was from the tribe of Benjamin. 
And, and he had knowledge of all of this that we're speaking. He had knowledge of the ancient order. Brother Shaul went to Arabia, to Mount Sinai, where he was taught by the master. And so Brother Shaul knows, and he wrote about this order, and it's there. But it's been distorted in the words. But now with the Ruach HaKadosh, we can clearly see the order there. I also say that because many are rejecting him. Um, they are rejecting him like they are the Messiah. They're, they're not reading those books because they say he's a false apostle. He's a wolf. But uh, brothers, I tell you that he's not. He tells you the truth. He was used mightily by Yahushua to proclaim the truth. So I pray that you reconsider if you are not um, listening or hearing to the books that he wrote. Let us continue. So we're going to reiterate more on this uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Before we continue, I'm trying to see if anybody has any questions. Okay. I think um, maybe we should just kind of open it at the end after going through everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're now going to talk about the Revelation 12 sign um, that occurred September 23rd 2017 uh, this is the great sign that appeared in the Shamaim a woman clothed with the sun uh, part of Revelation 12 and we're going to tie this in into the scripture that we're going to read because the woman was clothed with the sun and the woman was pregnant with a child we read in Exodus 20 verse 20 to 25 that uh, Yahuwah tells Moses, Moses that he shall make an altar of, of the earth for him and you shall sac sacrifice on it burnt offerings and your peace offerings and your sheep and your cattle in every place where I record my name for I will come to you and I will baruch you if you make me an altar of stone you shall not build it out of cut stones for if you lift your tool upon it you have polluted it again we are the living stones built up into a spiritual house and the rock knits us together if we bring something else into our spirit into our body or to the temple bodies we are polluting it we are unclean before him and so everything that the father instructed Moses and all the prophets was to be in decent and order according to his word, according to his devar, according to an order. And uh, it was supposed to be made with joy and gladness, nothing unclean, everything to the top quality. In 1 Peter 2.5, it tells us, you yourselves are the living stones that are built up a spirit or house to be, Kodesh, to be a Kodesh priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yahuwah through Yahushua HaMashiach, our high priest. So there's the confirmation that we are the, we are a spiritual house, we are the living stones, and we are to offer sacrifices acceptable to Yahuwah and Messiah Yahushua, our high priest. The word Sakar is record, H2142. It means to mark, to as to be recognized, that is to remember, uh, to recall, to come to mind. Uh, and the word record is from H2142, which means to be remembered that like a male. And uh, and here I want to bring this. It's a male child. Now we know that the 144,000 or the one new man that's going to be birthed as the seed is a male child, the man child. And we know that in Exodus 4, verse 22, it tells us that, that the Yashorel is called a son, the 12 tribes. So the 12 tribes together is, is a son. And so what I'm trying to say to you is that the birth of this woman that's right now that we're witnessing the birth pangs is that she's going to have a child. And this child is going to be a spiritual child. And this child is going to be the 144, the one new man. Uh, that are going to be filled with the power and the Ruach of Eliyahu, 
of the outpouring of the Ruach, these uh, uh, bright candidates would have gone and done everything beyond and above for, for, for Yahuwah. They are sold out. They have counted the cost. They have gone beyond and above daily. And, and they prepared. So when the Ruach, the outpouring came, they received it. Brothers and sisters, if you do not prepare, if you do not divorce your, the flesh from your body, if you do not stop walking in carnality and the cares of this world, the Ruach HaKadosh, the outpouring is going to bypass you and it's going to go into someone else. So I urge you to adhere to the message that you must divorce your flesh, that you must divorce, you must come out from the, amongst them. You must come out from all the religions and just have a relationship with the Father. Seek Him. Ask Him for all His ways to fill you with, with, a, with a Ruach so that, so that He can teach you His ways. Let Him teach you. Let us continue. In Revelation 12.5, uh, is talking about this woman, the daughter of Zion, that brought forth a male child. And this, this goes parallel with Isaiah 66, 8. Who has heard such a thing? Shall a nation be born in a moment? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. And the man child we, we just discussed is the 12 tribes. So it can be a man child, but it can be children because it is making the same reference here. Um, but what I want to note is this word Zion. Because from the very beginning, we were looking at the, in our introduction, we saw a, uh, an animation of the Temple of Melchizedek. And that is the or original location of Zion. And the city of David was built around it. And so perhaps that could be where Messiah will rule out of. It's a little, it's not a big place. It's a little place. But um, Zion is... Um, it's also a metaphor for the bride. And it's also Jerusalem. And like I said, right now the woman is in labor and having birth pangs as you're witnessing. Let us cross-reference this with uh, Isaiah 59, 20, verse 21. And the Redeemer shall come from Zion. And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob. Part of the, of the work of the spirit and power of Allah is to turn, to make teshuvah, to turn from transgression to Yahuwah's ways. And, and this is spoken here again is being reiterated by Isaiah 59. That unto them that turn from transgression in Yaakov, said Yahuwah, these are the ones that are born again. So, so the tribulation, the tribulation will be a time and it's also called the time of Jacob's trouble. And that is for, for us who have not yet um, have denied our flesh or have not divorced our flesh and are not yet born from above. We will be put into tribulation. We will be tried and tested until we do get prepared and, and receive a new name. From Jacob, we will now be part of Israel, scriptural Israel, Yasharal. And this is why he says, as for me, this is my covenant with them. This is Messiah's seed, as found in Isaiah 53.10, that he shall see his seed, says Yahuwah, my Ruach, HaKadosh, that is on you. He's speaking to Messiah. Father speaking to Messiah here. And my words, which I have put in your mouth, shall not depart out of your mouth, nor out of the mouth of your seed, or out of, mouth, or out of the mouth of your seed seeds. This is generationally. This would be us. From henceforth and forevermore, says Yahuwah. So when we make a confession of faith, uh, of emunah, of belief and trust, we are, um, we are, are to have Messiah's words in us. And he is living in us now. And, and this is uh, something that we, um, we are learning more about, to be sanctified to be set apart and to be truly truly born again this is the direction that we need to go to divorce our flesh so that we can fulfill that john uh first john 3 8 and not sin anymore because his seed will remain on us his seed the seed that is the messiah 
Let us continue. Yes. So now we're going to look at the everlasting covenant, how it's tied into the, to this book that we're reading. Uh, we're, we're taking it easy. We broke down chapter one and he, let us continue. Chapter, chapter one, verse two, behold, I, Eliyahu, write this record with my own hand and no man shall see it until I have ascended unto the Shamaims. So he knew when he was going to ascend, father allowed him to know. We also know that in Deuteronomy 17, 18, that the king, when he sits on a throne, that he is to write him a copy of the Torah. Uh, that and it's to be before the priest of the Levites, and it's to be approved by them, and it shall be with him, and and he shall read it all the days of his life. So he learns to fear Yahuwah his Elohim, and to guard all the words of his Torah, and and these laws, and to do them that is in his heart, and that his heart not be lifted up above his brothers, so that it's not to turn aside from the command, from the order to the right or to the left so that he prolongs his days in his reign, he and his children in the midst of Yasharel. So this Deuteronomy 17, 18 is a perfect picture of that oxen uh, that is that the older oxen and the younger oxen is that we are to walk in the straight path that our hearts not be turned or not be lifted above our brothers. And we are seeing that so much today uh, about, you know, how to pronounce names, about, you know, what revelation they've gotten. This divorcing the flesh is way more important. Being in covenant status and maintaining your covenant status is what's most important. And that is the message we're trying to portray today, that we need to weigh out the weightier matters of his word. Uh, we need to concentrate. We need to come together uh, and, and not fight anymore. We are uh, taking his name uh, and, and uh, he is not happy about that. He is pretty upset about that uh, because we are not loving each other as we should. We are not adhering to the order. And this is why I said, Yasharel is out of order. Now, we know that here in verse 2, uh, in chapter 1 of the uh, writings of Eliyahu, it says that until I have ascended to the Shamaim. Well, we know that Messiah also ascended. He ascended. This is the ascension in uh, chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. And it says there, therefore, when he had come together and they all came together with him, they asked him, Master, are you now restoring the kingdom of Yasharal? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father has set within his own authority, this prescribed order of the Ancient of Days. You see, um, at this time when they were asking him this, they really didn't know the order. Um, they didn't know that he had to come to repair our hearts. We had a heart condition. He had to prepare the way. He had to rebuild the fallen tabernacle of David so that we can now... Uh, the, the veil had to be broken so so that the golden calf uh, incident, uh, that death penalty position could be also paid for by his blood because it is the blood that atones for our souls. And so they did not know that. But then after he ascended, then they started getting the revelation as, as when they got the fullness, when the Ruach came upon them. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. This is what verse 8 talks about. But you will receive power when the Ruach HaKadosh has come upon you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Yehuda and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. The Great Commission in power. This is what they did. This is what those that are uh, receiving uh, the Ruach and power of Elijah today, when when they receive the, the, the power of the Ruach HaKadosh that will come upon them, in the, in the near future, this is they will be witnesses to Messiah to go to the uttermost parts of the world and proclaim the Bazaar's Hagulah, meaning the good news of the covenant, the good news of redemption that has not been preached yet. It has not been preached to the fullest. It, it, it's it's been um, in parts it has, but not to this 
not in the order of Melchizedek, not in the fullness power of casting out demons, setting the captives free, and bringing them to the light of the Torah into covenant status. That has not happened. It's beginning to happen now, but it hasn't happened to that level yet. But we need that power. And that is why we're here today, because we this power that was given in Acts 8, uh, it was prophesied to come back. Uh, and that's what we wait. That's what we long for. That's what we ask the Father. Father, fill us. Fill us. Let our, let our cups run over, Father, according to your will, according to your great favor. Chapter 1, verse 3 of the uh, writings of Eliyahu. Then shall my authority and the keys of my priesthood, which is the priesthood of the fathers, pass to my son Elisha by right of lineage and obedience. So the keys and authority, the ancients, the agency of the office, um, it, we're going we're gonna to talk about the authority and the keys. We're going to talk about the agency. We're going to talk about the priesthood. And we're going to talk about Elisha being a adopted just like we are adopted so let's let us continue let's make some connections with the scriptures here in hebrews 5 8 and 10 it tells us though messiah was a son yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered and being made perfect he became the author of eternal salvation unto all that obey him called of yahuwah a kohen hagadol a high priest after the order of melchizedek now, we know that John was the high priest at that time, and he was also his cousin. It was, he was Messiah's cousin, and it was, on, and it was through them that Messiah, Messiah told John that all righteousness was to be fulfilled. So as, as you can see here, uh, we have a connection here with the obedience. Uh, it was through obedience. It was through lineage. We know that John and Messiah were cousins. We know that Eliyahu received the birthright, the keys, and the authority through lineage. Uh, and he mentioned Ephraim. And we will cover that as we as we continue. We will talk about Ephraim as we continue. In Matthew 3, verse 15, Yahushua said to John, Permit it now, for thus it is proper to fulfill all righteousness of Yahuwah. All Zedekah. So again, we see the word righteousness. Melchizedek, our righteous king, our king of righteousness. This is very, very important that uh, when John had to immerse him. Um, and, and then after that, the father said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And that is what we want to hear too. We, uh, we desire that. We desire to be called that. But we must divorce our flesh. We must... We must seek Yahuwah in all his ways. And so what Messiah did, um, what the blood of Messiah did uh, when he was impaled, he, uh, according to Daniel 9.27, he, he finished the transgression and he made an end of sins. But this is all in working order because we're, there's still sin on the world. And he, he, made a, he was to make atonement for iniquity and he was to bring everlasting righteousness. And that's what I wanted to point out right here is the connection between Matthew 3.15 and, Matt, and Daniel 9.24 that he would fulfill all righteousness uh, when John um, immersed him. And so, and then he, he was to be anointed, to be anoint the most Kodesh HaKodashim, uh, what they call the Holy of Holies, uh, and, and Messiah was the temple. So it was the father who anointed him from the Shamaim. And he was immersed by John, but he was also anointed by the father. And so after that anointing, he then, he then started his ministry in the order of Melchizedek. It was not under the order of Levitical. He did not carry on that order. Many brothers are still believing that we are to fulfill the Levitical order. That order was a temporary tutor. That order is no longer. It was temporary. We are now in the Melchizedek order, no longer in the Levitical order. Uh, it is important that I say that because there are uh, there are a lot of brothers that are believing that we uh, we must accomplish that. And the reason that they are uh, believing that is because 
They are listening to uh, messianic rabbis that follow the Talmud or, 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 um, or they're listening to YouTube videos of Jewish um, rabbis that, that uh, speak on, on, this, on these things. And, and that's why many of our beloved ones are going over to Judaism and we're losing them um, to the other side. So let us continue with Ephesians uh, 1, where it's talking about the ancient days. Yahuwah chose us before him from the foundation of the world from the, since the ancient days, uh, before we were in our mother's wounds, before we were born from our mother, Messiah knew us, Yahuwah knew us. And at that time is when the gifts were given, our assigned malachs, our assigned messengers, everything was given then. And then he decided when we were going to be born. And he chose us to live at this time. So that we would be Kodeshim, that we would be set apart. He chose us so that we would be without blemish, without defect, before him in love. Having provided the predestination for us to choose as adopted. So we are adopted sons of the covenant through the Melech Yahushua Hamashiach to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will that we read earlier in Isaiah 46.10. The Torah in Leviticus tells us that whatsoever has defect or blemish, you shall not offer that. For it, our temple bodies, shall not be acceptable to Messiah before our high priest. So this is, this is very important that we div divorce our flesh here, is that having a spot or blemish or defect we are not set apart as Kodesh for a specific purpose. He will not be able to use us to the fullness potential because our temple bodies are polluted. Our temple bodies are uh, with blemish. So we must come to the realization that the order of Melchizedek is about righteousness. It's about perfection, about our, our heart's inclinations to be perfect before him, about purging everything sins unknown sins sins of ignorance covenants uh spiritual laws that we've broken we must repent of everything and come before him in humility uh, before his throne on our knees prostrated this will have to be a process uh, it's not done within an hour or two this must be a process of cleansing let us continue Now we will talk about Ephraim, how he ties in. We know that Ephraim received the land trust and not Reuben. Um, and we know that Edom sold his birthright for a bowl of soup. And here in Genesis 48, 5, it tells us that Ephraim and Manasseh shall be mine. This is what Jacob said, just as Reuben and Simeon are. S Reuben and Simeon were the... Reuben was the oldest and Simeon was the second oldest. And now we have Ephraim, who was the youngest, and Manasseh, who was the second oldest. But the but the barakat, the blessing, went to Ephraim. And as you can see, he crossed his arms, just like the Aleph that you see below. And Messiah said, I am the Aleph and the Tav. I am the first and the last. And so everything is done through the Messiah. Everything. In the past, in the present and in the future. In chapter 1, verse 4 of the writings of Eliyahu, it says, it deals with the birthright. This priesthood came down to me from the fathers by lineage, for I am a descendant of Yahushua, the son of Nun, who was descended from Ephraim, the son of Joseph, through whom the rights of the firstborn descended in Jashorel. So this verse does coincide with our scriptures so as we're testing this book we're seeing that it does fit it does fit the scriptures let us continue and in genesis 48 14 it says yashorel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon ephraim's head who was the younger and his left hand upon manasseh's head guiding his his hands knowingly crossing his hands for Manasseh was the firstborn. We have three Aleph Tavs in one verse. 
So we know here it was Messiah, the Ruach, that was leading Yaakov's hands uh, to cross his hands, to Baruch Ephraim, so that he would receive the birthright. Now, was Aliyahu of Ephraim? It doesn't really say in our scriptures. It doesn't say what tribe he's from. Uh, so it's 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 questionable in the in the scriptures. It doesn't give us a direct link that he is. But here he does say that he is from the tribe of Ephraim, which is very, very important to, uh, to mention that as we continue. We do know that in the book of Numbers 13, 8, that Yahushua, Hosea, some call him Husha, Yahshua, the son of Nun, was from Ephraim. So that does check out. That is correct. Now we know that Messiah Yahushua is the second Joshua who will take us across the Jordan to enter into his rest, to enter into the land, the promised land. We do know that. We do know that it will be him who will take us across the Jordan into the promised land as we will receive our allotted inheritance if we have, um, you know, gone beyond and above in covenant status just believing in messiah is not good enough uh it's not good enough we have to have works we have to have and works. thank you everyone for your support of this ministry this will wrap up part one of part two and shalom from ephesians 219 ministries i mean so be it, so, so be, be it. it. Okay, so, so praise uh, yeah, praise.